Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at dexmedetomidine, or as many of you may know it, Presidex. Many of these videos in the pharmacology section will focus on a single drug used in the practice of anesthesia, its mechanism of action, major side effects, things about them to take into consideration, how and why they're used, and some high yield details and clever ways to remember them. Think of this screen when we're done as your Presidex dexmedetomidine cheat sheet. Now, this video will vary slightly from the other pharmacology and sedative videos in that dexmedetomidine is primarily used and FDA approved only for sedation in mechanically ventilated patients for less than 24 hours. That being said, we not only use it in the ICU, but in the operating rooms for certain cases and situations as well. So, let's get started. As always, the drug type, dexmedetomidine, is a derivative of, or is an imidazole derivative. And its mechanism of action is primarily alpha-2 agonism. Now, believe it or not, the drug actually got its start in veterinary medicine, where it was used primarily in cats and dogs, under a different brand name, of course, for anxiolysis and sedation in those animals. And actually, recently, it's been adapted as a sublingual tablet for horses. Pretty cool. So, as I mentioned, it's an alpha-2 agonist and works primarily by exerting its effects on the alpha-2 receptors in the CNS. And I'm actually going to mark it down over here that, and this is going to be a big one, it works to cause hypnosis or puts our patients to sleep by acting at the locus ceruleus in the brain. And I'm going to underline this and I'm going to say this again and again and again. Alpha-2 agonism at the locus ceruleus. Alpha-2 agonism at the locus ceruleus causes hypnosis. This will come up on your exams. And it causes pain management, which is really just analgesia, but I couldn't think of the word via its operation on the alpha-2 in the spinal cord. These are very important and they will come up. So please remember, hypnosis, dexmedetomidine, alpha-2, locus ceruleus. And we should note that this is something that makes this drug very important uh, in that it's a step towards making an anesthetic that also acts as an analgesic. Unlike propofol and atomidate, two of our more commonly used induction agents or hypnotics that don't cause analgesia, uh, dexmedetomidine does, which is a really great effect when we're talking about, say, our ideal anesthetics. Now, one of the important miscellaneous facts to know about dexmedetom dexmedetomidine is that it causes our patients to enter an almost normal sleep state. This is different than our other drugs, and it causes our patients through activation of parts of the brain that undergo normal sleep to look like they are actually having normal, regular nighttime sleep, which is really important, especially in patients in the ICU where delirium can become a big issue. Now, as far as duration of action goes, and I know we're kind of all over the place with this, um, it's not really given as an induction bolus dose, but rather as a drip for sedation as we talked about. So it, we talk about it really in its context sensitive half time, which would be how long the drug lasts once you stop an infusion. And with this drug, it depends on how long the infusion is going for. It could be anywhere from minutes to hours, depending on how long you've had it running. Now, as far as dosing goes, we run this anywhere from 0.1 all the way up to one microgram per kilogram per hour. And that's what we use as our sedation dose. But we can also bolus it from 0.2 to 0.7 micrograms per kilogram. And that's used on our initial bolus before we start our drip. So sometimes you'll see patients who go for craniotomies and we want to initially put them to sleep so that they can make their uh, exposure and then we want the drip to then take over and for the patient to be able to wake up from it when we stimulate and talk to them. 
Uh, next, metabolism. Good old liver, like many of our drugs. And then it is excreted by the kidneys. So let's take a look now at the cardiovascular and the respiratory effects as we do with all of our drugs. Dexmedetomidine causes bradycardia and hypotension. Now this is primarily the result of the activation of the alpha-2 receptors which cause arterial muscle relaxation. Now very important to note is that when we do bolus it, bolus doses do cause an initial transient hypertension before then causing hypotension. So again, and this will come up, bradycardia and hypotension from the drip, but the bolus dose may cause transient hypertension first, followed by hypotension. Again, I'll say it one more time to be clear that it causes bradycardia and hypotension with a drip, but it causes a transient hypertension when bolused with bradycardia that then becomes hypotension when it's transitioned to its drip form. Now, like ketamine, for example, the respiratory system, it, there really is not a big change in CO2 response. And our patients don't really become apneic. Uh, they, they do tend to breathe while they're on it. And actually, sometimes in the ICU, when we're trying to extubate patients who may become tachypneic or very anxious when they start waking up from their sedation vacation and we try to SBT them, sometimes we'll actually leave a little bit of dexmedetomidine on to help them relax while we attempt to liberate them from the ventilator. So patients actually do breathe while they have dexmedetomidine on, which makes it really great to the respiratory system. Now it should be noted that when you combine this, say with narcotics or benzos, there is a synergistic effect that can lead to apnea. So just be aware of that. Finally, the last thing that's probably going to come up for dexmedetomidine is going to be this magic number, the 1 to 1600 ratio for alpha 1 to alpha 2 receptor agonism. And I bring this up because this will come up at some point. I've seen it. Other people have seen it. And basically what this is saying is that unlike clonidine, which is also an alpha-2 agonist, the dexmedetomidine binds much, much tighter to alpha-2 than it does to alpha-1, as a result, leading to this very good uh, analgesia and hypnosis because of its effect on the alpha-2 receptors in the central nervous system. So, as always, it's a pleasure. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to write in or contact us. If you'd like to get involved, we'd love to hear from you. Click the subscribe button below. Follow us on Instagram at Count Backwards from 10. And as always, stay tuned for the next video.